talking to Dave about that, going into that shortage of homes, Stats Can uh, put up a post that there was a population sur surge of 285,000 people in Canada in the last 120 days. 120 days. 285,000. Yeah. Wow. So where do they go? Where, well, where do they go? Like, what, where do they actually go? Like, where are they, like, where are they living? You're listening to the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast with your hosts, Paul Stevenson, David Warren, and Greg Campbell. Let's see what's going on in the world of real estate today. Yay! Yes. We're back. The Ottawa Real Estate Podcast. My name is Paul Stevenson. I'm here with Greg Campbell. Hello. And I'm here with David Warren. We are the hosts of the show, uh, David and myself. We are mortgage agents. We love finance and financing. And Greg Campbell is a realtor and a managing director at the agency, Ottawa. The agency. Brandon, funny story, actually, this weekend, Greg, uh, yes. you, you know this, Dave, you obviously wouldn't. But uh, I was going to my son's hockey game in Smith Falls, uh, doing a little tour. And uh, I'm walking into the arena after just parking. I'm with my youngest son. And I look over and I see an agency hat. And I said, well, that's interesting on, the, on this, you know, handsome looking older man. And, uh, and then I thought it was actually Mauricio, the, the owner of the agency. Because, you know, beard just kind of had the same, same vibe. Uh, and then I looked over and saw it was Anna's mom and father. So it was actually <laughs> Greg's uh, in-laws. They were for some reason in Smith Falls, and I was like, "What the hell are you guys doing here?" So I started talking to them, uh, and they were actually heading to see Anna, who is performing in Smith Falls. They had like, I guess, shut down the main road, yeah, and were doing a full shindig. So they were parking there to shuttle to see Anna, and just like perfect timing, we just crossed paths, saw the agency hat, great branding, great humans, yeah. And his dad that was the show in the brand studio, <laughs> vibing out in the agency hat, loved it, yeah. Yeah, it looked good on him. Did. How, was it, how did the show go? It was good. I mean, you know, I think overall they probably should have started those shows earlier. Anna's band was on at 7. And then the, the next band was on at 9. I think it was a little bit chilly, but the turnout was actually not bad. Lots of kids. So it was fun. Yeah, I was talking about that this weekend with, uh, with my kids. At, you know, Smith Falls is the average town across Canada, you know, like the Ottawa's, the Toronto's, the Vancouver's, those are really like anomalies in Canada. Like we have half of our population lives in five cities mm -hmm. and then everyone else is in a small town like Smith Falls. Yeah. <laughs> like everyone, most, the majority of the country, well, half of the country is living in these, you know, small towns. So that's, that's true Canada. That's the real Canada out there. Smith Falls. How was your weekend, David? It was good. It was nice and uh, relaxing. Got up to the cottage. Hadn't been there in uh, about six weeks. So just uh, or nine, Ollie, and uh, just took it easy. It was it was good to do absolutely nothing. Yeah, cottages will be sh shut down soon. I think well, at least the, the, the three seasons, seasons ones, obviously. Well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, what's uh, what's going on this week? What do we got? Uh, what do we got in the news there, Greg? You were giving us some. I got some. some I got some info. You know, I, I'll I'll start off with uh, showed some homes on the weekend. Uh, I've had a couple open houses on, on my listings and, um, by the end of the day, uh, there was three properties that I saw in the morning and then two of those had offers on them after the open houses, um, on, on my, the one that I did, it was actually my mother's listing. Um, I believe an offer came in, uh, last night as well. I'll have to confirm that, but it was just nice to see that. The, the, all open houses were busy yesterday mm -hmm. and you know three properties getting offers after the open houses that you know and two from the actual open house from people that mm -hmm. came through the open house i think that's a good sign of you know comparable to last year of the healthy october that happened when we had that october to mid-december um surge and I think that's very welcome we'll see what happens but uh i know that it was it was a really busy weekend in real estate um which was I that in orleans orleans property no this was actually one in fin no sorry one in stonebridge barhaven and two in canada mm. yeah i was uh, i was cross town this weekend there's another one in orleans i know that also got offers i think it got multiples price to sell though 
Um, what was that stat that I just did? So I, I just, I'm sitting here and I just kind of did some different stats actually than I usually do. And of course I brought up Orleans, um, because it's always the first on my, on my hot sheet. So in total of all formats, like all styles of homes, including rentals, there's 283 listings in Orleans right now. Wow. In the last seven days, 26 conditionally sold and 28 sold. The average price was 629,000, 34 days on market and 99% list price to sales price ratio. So that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of, you know, it's the standard, you know, we've been at that 35 days for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's going to increase. I think we're going to kind of stick around there. Um, and there was 12 properties that were rented, average 18 days on market. And the average rental price is $2,554. I found that. That's high. That's very high. Rent, I have a friend rent, who rent yeah. prices have been coming up a lot they, again, and that's and that's generally yeah. mostly townhomes. Uh, some detached. The, there was two detached that were like you know well into the low like low to mid threes, but then there was also some detached that were in like the low twos. So I mean, I have to assume that's obviously because of rates going up, inflation, everything else too. I mean, you know, if you're a landlord. I know we've talked about this, but you're obviously not not buying an investment property to, to be running in a deficit. I mean, maybe a slight deficit, but the goal is obviously to at least break even. So, you know, if the cost of utilities and this is the uh, thing, man. things are going up. And I had a friend mm -hmm. that just rented in Carlton Place and they were paying, they're now paying 2200 for a, like a small three bedroom home. So um, I shouldn't say small. It's actually a pretty decent size, but still, you know, 2200 for rent in, in a small town seems insane. A lot. Yeah. Well, and I got it's a call from um, I got a call from a, a listener of the show, big fan of the show, on um, on Sunday morning, and they were talking about this. They have a single family home in Orleans that they're renting out, and they're um, like they're not cash flowing, and they're not even breaking even. So it mm -hmm. looks like that might be a, be a sale coming up. So it's not, you know, because I think what they want like to rent it, it was it was just unrealistic to make it, make it work. I don't know the whole scenario, but anyways, it was just an interesting call to get and uh, just see where people's heads are at. You know, they've got a few properties and <clears throat> they're going to get rid of the big one and keep the small ones. So what, what is the rental market like? Cause I know we talked about this maybe a couple months ago and we were saying that, you know, like a bachelor or like studio apartment downtown is two grand. But you can get a, you know, a, a three bedroom townhome in Barhaven for, you know, couple hundred dollars more maybe a few mm -hmm. hundred dollars more but something like that like a single family home in orleans you know three bedrooms four bedrooms a couple washrooms like what what is that renting for right now is it over three thousand is that, it no 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 well, that's that's the well, a single family detached yeah yeah i mean it could be that's what i'm saying there was a few that were in the mid twos and there was a couple that were in the mid low threes in the okay. last week so just depending on what it is, but yeah, that's you're you're probably mid to high two thousands, like twenty five, twenty eight hundred on an average. But uh, I think it just depends as well, you know, where again, you know, offices and businesses are are wanting people back in the office, um, and so when you've got that, instead of people commuting from like Barhaven downtown, uh, that's when you know the rental market and you know, in the downtown core, I think will pick up, but even to the rental side of things, I have clients that we're doing a build right now in Rockland of a multi-unit and we had an appraisal done in June. We're getting one updated. Uh, so, you know, since June, like only a few months ago and market rents in Rockland are up dramatic are up so much in the last few months that it's changed. It's increasing the value on paper of the property, uh, just because in the last few months of, of rents going up, um, nothing else changed. So, um, that's, you know, certainly even to that in, in, you know, the other outside the core markets, uh, they are seeing that, that increase as well, for sure. I think when people, you know, when prices are, when, when rates are high, people aren't able to qualify or are staying on the sidelines because they want to see what happens with the market, you know, prices, you know, going down or, or rates going up. Um, you know, they're, you know, we've talked about a buyer sitting on the sidelines and so that's driving the rental market. People are, you know, kind of priced out. Um, you know, for now, or, or at least, or sometimes mentally priced out. Uh, and so they're just staying and, and driving that rental. So yeah, we'll see how that, uh, how that continues. You gotta, yeah, I mean, you really gotta feel for, you know, if you're a, I mean, my daughter is in that situation, but you know, she's just graduated university and she's starting her life. Like 
how do you even forget that? Let's say you're, you know, late twenties and you're starting a family or early thirties. Like, how do you afford these prices? You know what I mean? Like a rental, like a, a home for three grand or $2,500 to rent is, is wild. Yeah. Like you gotta be just to cover your rent. You gotta be making when well, you gotta have like 35 gotta grand a year, friends. you know, you gotta be doing it with your friends for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's eating ramen every no. day. Like, you know, it's not even, uh, no, you're, yeah, it's, it's yeah. wild. It's wild. The, uh, I saw this, um, I saw this thing the other day and, uh, it was on the, on a podcast and they were commenting and these are, this, this was a very, uh, I think it was Glenda Baker out of the U S major realtor. Anyway, she was saying that it's our job at our age now who, who are having children or have young children to be buying properties as investments now for our kids later, because they won't be able to afford homes when they're, mm. when they're older. It says it's our duty as parents to buy investments now for our kids to live in later. And I thought that was pretty wild, you know, because mm. they're saying it'll be, unless you're making a silly amount of money, um, you won't be able to buy, you know, and a lot of that's based on shortage of properties. And so, and, and Paul, before, before you, uh, you came on there, I was just talking to Dave about that going into that shortage of homes stats can, uh, put up a post that there was a population sur surge of 285,000 people in Canada in the last 120 days, 120 days, 285,000. Yeah. Wow. So where do they go? Where, well, where do they go? Like what, where do they actually go? Like where are they, where are I, they living? I don't know. I, I don't know. It just, that, and that was just the, the blanket statement, 285,000 more immigrants like in Canada now in the last 120 days. And that's, you know, the government's not paying attention to the needs of its citizens. Basically. I have it to is. imagine that we're going to be seeing a lot of, uh, you like Ukrainian refugees as well coming if they're having our, if they're not yeah, already here, here uh, already. Yeah. I mean, that, I'm sure that is playing into that number, but yeah, it's pretty, that's, it's just insane. Like I just, when you actually wrap your head around the numbers, it's, it's kind of mind blowing. Like it's, it's amazing well, that people are like, it might, like, like that, making it, you know, like it's, it's tough even at the best of times. Like it's, we've, it's, uh, we've talked in the past, like, you know, kind of, uh, over and over, kind of repeated it over and over. And, and I know some comments on on our youtube channel and stuff like that of people saying like you know oh yeah you know you guys are always bullish or whatever it's 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 numbers like that are the reason why you know at the beginning of the year we talked about that they had an earmark of five hundred thousand, um you know new immigrants or, or permanent residents uh for each year over the next three years but we've just seen you know stats canada's numbers not torf's numbers two hundred eighty five thousand in the last 120 days, you know, that's, you know, that's half of what they were, the government was earmarking or assuming for, you know, for 2022. And, and that's been, you know, that's what's come in. I assume that's probably a, a large portion of that is probably international students, perhaps, um, because now they can sure. come in uh, and just universities back in person, mm -hmm. you know, from the last couple of years, but we'll probably see that changing more now that we've got uh, restrict, you know, the restrictions at the border, have finally dropped as of uh, two days ago. So that number will probably, I would think, increase even more. But yeah, um, I, I came through Montreal a few weeks ago and it was chaos, like <laughs> absolute chaos. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I, if you do those numbers, like 285, if we were talking about like the, you know, five or six major cities in Ottawa, that's, that's you know, 50,000 people coming into each city in the last three months. That's a lot of, a lot of people that need to be housed. Um, and speaking of Ontario, actually, I, I sent this headline to you guys right before we came on, but the headline through Canadian Mortgage Trends, it's my go-to for, uh, for Toe Rep. It says a record number of Ontarians are, Ontarians are leaving the province. Where are they all going? That's, that's our question, too. It says, leave Ontario has been the traditional advice for prospective homebuyers frustrated by the province's unaffordable housing market. In 2021 alone, nearly 108,000 Ontarians took the well-worn nugget to heart. A number not seen since the early 1980s. That's a great sentence. Ontario took the well-worn nugget to heart. Mm -hmm. um, the outflow <laughs> continued into the second quarter of this year when an additional 49,000 residents packed their bags and relocated to another province, according to recently released data. That resulted in the province seeing its highest quarterly net loss to interprovincial migration since 1971. I'm actually kind of surprised to hear this. Where did they all go? According to Stats Canada, estimates of interprovincial migration from Ontario, roughly a quarter moved to Alberta. 
Another quarter shipped out to the Maritimes in Newfoundland and Labrador, with Nova Scotia earning the lion's share of new arrivals. <laughs> I don't know who this author is, but they're loving their their uh, cliches here, their their creative sentence structures. Uh, Quebec, for the first time in its history, took in more Ontarians than it ex than it exported Quebecers to Ontario. And British Columbia welcomed its largest number of Ontario arrivals since the early 1990s. Wow. At the same time, a Scotiabank report notes that Ontario welcomed 198,500 newcomers from outside Canada, a record not seen since at least 1946. Nonetheless, real estate agents in the Maritimes and Alberta are noticing the effects of interprovincial migration. So a lot of people leaving, uh, more coming in <laughs> from a lot of, you know, Ontarians leaving and then uh, international mm -hmm. uh, immigration coming to Ontario. So seems like the difference 40 50,000 still coming to Ontario. So we're losing 108 locals and, and I think it's going to grow. I think that's mm -hmm. going to happen more. Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be mean, more local and I mean even more locals leaving the country. You know, and more I guess that's how the city I guess that's how the country repopulates. Like everyone goes to the dense cities and then the people in the dense cities don't want to be there anymore. They go to the outskirts and that that creates markets there. So um, well, and, and, and the value goes up, right? Like they're, you know, they've been there maybe in that city for 20, 30 years, value of their home goes up, they cash out, move to a province where it's, you know, lesser cost of living and um, retire or, or, you know, downgrade. But yeah, it's certainly an ongoing, uh, an ongoing thing. So Ontario mortgage agents, new to Canada programs, learn them, learn, know them. There's mm -hmm. going to be, uh, there's going to be more and more of that in the coming, uh, coming years for sure. I've got some other uh, stats here. There's actually some Remax stats about um, price values across Canada. They're saying they're going to see an average decrease of 2.2% this fall, uh, minus 3% in Vancouver, minus 6.3% in Toronto, minus 8% in Winnipeg, plus 3% in Calgary. And of course, Remax conveniently left Ottawa out of that study. Um, <laughs> that's fine. We don't need them. We've got Torap. Although I don't have a number for that right now, <laughs> I, I predict. What do you What do you guys predict? I know we're, we're predicting up for the year. What do you predict in the next three months? A zero. zero. Now till till. New I'd, Year's? Say, I'd say I'd say even even. Now from now till New Year's. Yeah, I'm I'm going to say up a couple points. Okay, so maybe. What's the average home price right now? Let's. Uh, let's... Average home price nationally is. Uh, oh, sorry, I don't have that number here. I have what they're predicting um nationally over the next year is four and a half four point seven percent seven hundred and twenty thousand um so they're predicting an increase of four point seven mm -hmm. by, by year's end mm -hmm. like for the for the whole year mm -hmm. um i think ottawa's around high six like 697 or something like, like right that. now or something around there yeah, I think I have it somewhere, but uh, I, I think we're going to see that. The new board stats will be out next week. Well, we'll be out for the next show, so that should be pretty. Uh, it'll be good to see. So our ace oh, there we go. Six thirty-seven. The average home price in Canada for August twenty-two is up one percent from last month. See one monthly basis for five months. Okay, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my guns here. I, I think we're still going to see. I think we're going to see a very busy fall. It's friggin' mind blowing. It's starting October third. I'm like looking at my at the date, <laughs> and I'm like, what's well, not October? Uh, yes, it is. It's October, well, 4th, I guess, when this comes out. Um, so yeah, so I would say I'm going to, I'm going to go with David. I think probably, uh, we're probably going to see between now and New Year's, I'll say another one or 2% increase. I think we're going to, I think, I think we are going to see a lot of sales. Like you said, Greg, I think we're going to see a busy fall probably right up until the first week of December. And then, uh, and then from there on out, I think it'll plateau. So I think in but the it, next month and a half, we'll see some decent, decent I think sales. so too. An another interesting stat that I have here <laughs> is that Korea put out that we're down 20% this year in terms of total homes traded across Canada. 20% 20, 20 down since 2021. And prices are consistent though. Yeah. Prices are, are it's just the number of, of transactions. Prices are still up. Sales, um, and they're predicting another sales drop of 2.3% in 2023 across Canada. So that's, I mean, there is, you know, there is that, um, there's also the, the foreign buyer tax that's come into play that I'm sure is affecting that number of, uh, transactions as well. The 20% across the board where it used to just be in the GTA, it's, you know, all of Ontario where that'll, you know, that certainly affects international buyers. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, you know, 
October 26th is the next uh, Bank of Canada rate announcement. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see what the, you know, over the next three weeks, what that, what the sales volumes like leading into that. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, wh what the bank, you know, how much the Bank of Canada, you know, makes any, in makes any increase and, and what that kind of has as a ripple effect. But for those of you buying or looking, shopping right now, October 26th is the bank announcement. So if you're looking at locking in a static variable payment, close over the next few weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I've got a couple a couple friends that um, they think there's going to be another 0. 0.75 in October, and then there's going to be another 0. 0.75 whenever the next one is, right? December or November? <laughs> so I, I was reading over the weekend um, – and a uh, publication by Macquarie, who's a, it's a large wealth management firm, um, about the Canadian market. They're expecting uh, an increase on the, you know, in October, but no more further increases. Um, that that will be sufficient, and and then we'll hit, then Canada will hit a a, a, re a slight recession. Um, I agree. Going with that. into going into 2023 and maintain. And for price, they were saying uh, it's, it was in the Global Mail this weekend. If anyone's looking to read it, uh, I'll try and find it to post. And then, uh, and then price, and then Bank of Canada to start lowering rates by the end of 2023. Um, for uh, for those of you kind of wondering what the Bank of Canada Prime or Bank Prime might be like, that's at least what Macquarie, which is a, a very large uh, institution's uh, forecasting. Great, great segue, David. Uh, so. Another article that I was going to bring up, but this is, I mean, you, you're basically leading me right into it. So I'll, I'll talk about it now. Um, this is from, this is on CTV and it was actually uh Macquarie group that, uh, that, that was quoted in it. So it says Canada's headed for a recession in early 2023, according to one economist. I don't think they were in a recession just yet, but I do think that one is on the horizon. David Doyle, the head of economics at Macquarie group said, our baseline is that Kendall enter recession in the first quarter of 2023. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we will post the article. So if anyone wants to read that, um, you know, certainly do that. It says, aimed at fighting inflation, the Bank of Canada raised interest rates to 3.25% on September 7th, which has contributed to the cooling housing market. The increase followed a full percentage point hike in July, which we all know, which is the largest single rate increase in Canada since August 98. The Bank of Canada began hiking interest rates in March after they fell to a quarter percent during the COVID pandemic. Um, 12 months, 12 months. Yeah, it says, well, so it likely to, sorry, economists widely predict the next interest rate hike will come on October 26th. Uh, and Doyle thinks it could be the last. So exactly what you said, Dave, but it will likely be potentially six, nine, 12 months before we start to see the bank cutting rates again. That's because they'll want to be certain that they brought inflation under control. Which so is what we a, said, right? Next July. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Start coming down. Oh, so the, I'm starting to think you know, we know what we're talking about, guys. <laughs> you know, kind of, it kind of circles back to that, that, uh, topic that we've touched on in the past paul and i have of you know looking at short-term money or if you're in a variable rate mortgage you know certainly there's likely to be another increase on the 26th however you know keeping that in mind of you know not just not torah predicting it but we're you know our our information based on you know uh based on experts in the field but that you know if looking at macquarie for example and and others that have also speculated that this will be the case uh, of hitting that recession and rates coming back down in about 12 months is looking at short-term money, whether it be variable, stay in the course. Um, you know, it, you know, it'll be, it's going to be rough waters like it's been in the, you know, over the last six months. Uh, but, uh, but rates, you know, come back down and, and, you know, and so will your rate on that variable, you know, or if you're looking at fixed, looking at a short-term money, whether that be, you know, one, two, three year uh, fixed, and, and just kind of hedging and, and waiting to see what happens. I know, you know, I've got a, I've got a rental property out East and, and for that building, you know, it's up for renewal in November and, you know, from where, where it's at, you know, I'm likely looking at a, a double to two and a half time rate increase on it, but I'm looking at one and two year, um, you know, kind of hedging that uh, assumption that rates are going to come back down over those two years. And it's certainly, you know, something as whether you're a home buyer or whether you're uh, like primary residence or whether you're an investor, uh, certainly looking at those experts out in the field um, of what they're saying, you know, where the economy is headed and, and where rates are headed and kind of keeping that in mind. I have an interesting comment uh, that just happened or that I just heard speaking with an investor the other day. 
they were, you know, I was talking about rates and the rates going up again and whatever. And all they said to me, there's like, well, they're like, you know, I'm not really even really thinking about the rates right now. I have a 60% down payment for my next investment property. So I'm not too concerned about that. And I just thought that was a really big statement to make wondering mm-hmm. how many other people there are like her investing. So, yeah, I mean, there's certainly like, I, I will say the, the mom and pop investors that maybe are buying their one rental property or, or two mm-hmm. rental, you know, or have a, you know, one, maybe two mm-hmm. um, individual units. Those buyers are certainly have been priced out, priced interest rate wise out of the market um, because it doesn't make sense to them and they can, you know, they're just going to mm-hmm. wait it out. Um, investors that are buying, uh, you know, multi-residential or that they, you know, have portfolios where they're buying, they continue to buy. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what market. I know, you know, Greg, you have a stat from Stats Canada, I think, uh, over what, since 2000, uh, prices have gone up, you know, and they know what, you know, investors that are, you know, are they well capitalized or that have been doing it a long time? They're not driven by interest rate. Obviously, that plays a, a big portion of whether you know a property is going to cash flow or not. But but knowing that in the long term, values are going to go up, rents are going to go up. Um, that uh, that you know interest rates will stabilize and and come back down, and and they find ways of making it work. I think it's the individual mom and pops that are uh, yeah. There's um, our, a good friend of ours, uh, Brock Frost, had a, had a great post on uh, Instagram <laughs> earlier. It says, of all the investment properties I've sold in my career, I couldn't tell you the interest rate on any one of those mortgages, but I do mm-hmm. remember how much I profited off each one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I right? mean, you're not like at the, at the point, you know, when you're purchasing them, obviously sometimes it can, you know, on multi-residential, it's going to hinder, you know, how, what your uh, loan to value will be uh, on, you know, buying more than uh, a property with more than five units. You're into the multi-residential falls under a different category. It's not just 20% down. It's based on your debt coverage ratio. So depending on how much revenue to uh, cover the expenses. So what happens is the loan to value, the amount of money or mortgage you're going to get on that property will scale um, depending on, you know, what it carry, what it costs to carry that property. So it might adjust it, temp, you know, certainly interest rates being up or adjusting it for a lot of people right now. But uh, those individuals know that it, it's, you know, it's short-term pain for long-term gain in the sense that they're going to have to put more money down for that acquisition. But, you know, the interest rates are what they are and, you know, it still makes sense on that property. And they know mm-hmm. that when they come back down, that you know, that they'll then, you know, refinance to, to recapitalize those funds and, and move on to the next project. But yeah, you don't pay attention. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you what my interest rates have been on any of my primary residences. No, and that's, you know, and that's the thing that we keep trying to get through to people that, um, you know, if you're buying a house to live in, you love the house, like it shouldn't, it, that's not really the issue. Have it fit your budget. The media, the media is, makes it an issue for you and it distracts you from what your actual goal is. Mm. And there's a very good chance that if you're paying rent, that the rent is going to be equal to, if not more than what the actual mortgage payment is on that mm-hmm. same property. Yeah. yeah. Regardless of the rate. But down payments or down payments become a problem. That's right? the biggest so thing. People, yeah. Down payments the is the biggest barrier to entry. <clears throat> yeah. So I think, you know, with that, it's, you know, for those people that are listening that are, or, or you're a mortgage agent or you're a realtor, uh, but, and people are worried about, you know, their down payment or how they accumulate it. It's talking to them about setting a budget, you know, what that goal is looking at what the down payment is on a, on a, you know, the average purchase price, um, in the town, you know, in the city that you're in, uh, and setting up that roadmap instead of getting a car at, you know, a thousand dollars, $800 a month in payment, um, maybe look at one that's in the three or 400 and, and putting away that other five or $600 a month, uh, that you would be putting to a bigger lease or a bigger, you know, vehicle, mm-hmm. Um, putting that into the savings and putting that, contributing that to your RSPs where you're accumulating then, you know, $7,200 a year into your RSPs, which then gives you a tax deduction um, and utilizing those, you know, those, those programs and setting that, you know, just setting up that game plan that, you know, you might have to drive a, a cheaper vehicle or, you know, might not be the, the luxury vehicle that you were hoping to drive for a few years. But in those, over those few years, you can set that that roadmap of, of savings. Um, even, even I just did that. I didn't buy the luxury vehicle I wanted. 
Yeah. <laughs> I said, I, I made a smart decision. I'm like, no, you know what? I don't need that luxury reveal vehicle yet. I'll yeah, get that honestly, later. the, 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 the <laughs> middle, I shouldn't say middle class, but like the middle class of cars, I guess, like not the luxury cars. Like they're so, they have all of the bells and whistles that, that the luxury vehicles have now, other than mm. obviously other than the status, uh, other than the status. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, a funny story for me. I actually just just paid off my car, so got that off the books. And then uh, I've had uh, it's been to the shop twice after not going to the shop for four years. Been to the shop twice in the last month. So that's great. Got back to my trip. Didn't start. Just new alternator needed. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Um, mood boost. Do boost it. my own mood. <laughs> Get away from this uh, negative Good. talk. Uh, all right, I got four today. Uh, decent. Decent. You guys can be the judge. Number one, why was the sand wet? Why was the sand wet? Because the seaweed. Wow. Mm. Seaweed. Weed. <laughs> Weed. Uh, number two, which hand is better to write with? Neither. It's better to write with a pen. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Unless you're signing in blood on a mortgage contract. <laughs> um, <laughs> number three, how do you stop an astronaut's baby from crying? You rock it. <laughs> you rock it. And last but not least, number four, what washes up on really small beaches? Microwaves. Aye. Microwaves. They're all pretty good. Mm -hmm. Pretty decent. Mm -hmm. Wordplay. <laughs> A little wordplay for toe rep. Uh, as always, thank you. If you made it to the Mood Boost, you're, you're a real committed listener. We appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, the, uh, the show is, uh, is brought to you by North Brew. Is North it? Brew Coffee, is it? I don't know. <laughs> is it? Uh, Northbrew.ca. I think they're still offering a promo. <laughs> if you use the promo code podcast. Uh, also by uh, the agency, uh, Referral Mortgages, and uh, myself, Paul Stevenson paulstevenson.ca and Stephen Hopkins our uh, ace producer in the background he actually helped us with a few stats today thank you Stephen shows come out Tuesdays 10 a.m. every week YouTube all your podcast aggregators podcast platforms and uh, make sure to subscribe review like share ask questions we gotta reach out set up that dinner actually Michael reached out to us and wanted to know what we needed okay, from yeah, him. yeah yeah let's yeah. figure that I'm out. in a place start a thread so, uh, uh, I we're we coming Michael going. yeah, yeah let's go. All right. All right, everyone. Enjoy the week, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Jesus. Thanks for Jesus. tuning in, everyone. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe, because we'd really like that.